the US military has finally created a real-life Terminator robot called the XQ-58 Valkyrie. This drone can accomplish things people in the past have only dreamed of. In fact, the drone offers a wide range of capabilities that would give the US Air Force an edge in a war against China that the Chinese could never beat. Produced by defense manufacturer Kratos, the Valkyrie is a revolutionary drone that is built around one singular purpose, making a fully autonomous system capable of delivering lethal weapons on its own. Unlike previous generations of drones that focused on surveillance or even armed drones like the Predator, the main commonality that all these drones had was the fact that a human operator was on the other end, making decisions. While other drones currently in development do use artificial intelligence to operate. As far as publicly known, the Valkyrie is the only AI-powered drone that also has the capability to launch real, live weapons. So, how does the military intend to incorporate this into its operations? As of the making of this video, the Air Force and Marine Corps are the two services spearheading this technology. Their reasons for doing so may surprise you. The average cost of a fifth-generation fighter like the F-35 is around $80 million out of the door. However, this cost does not include things like routine maintenance, spare parts, fuel, or time spent to train the pilots and maintainers. Because of this, the lifetime cost of a single F-35 can well exceed $100 million. With such a huge amount of money poured into a single F-35, the military is looking for ways to protect it. That's where the Valkyrie comes into play. By integrating the Valkyrie into manned aircraft formations, the Air Force and Marine Corps basically want to make the XQ-58 like a sacrificial lamb. Except this lamb has a little more bite than your standard little Bo Peep. Imagine this. Five, maybe even three years from now, there could be formations of fighter aircraft with this innovative drone flying side by side. In a mission, these drones could peel off to either suppress enemy air defenses or even engage other fighter aircraft since the Valkyrie can travel over 650 miles per hour and climb up to 45,000 feet, which is more than enough capability to contend with most fighter aircraft of today. However, this AI-powered drone is much more than a decoy, and its current known capabilities make it a vital asset on the battlefield that won't hurt the US military's wallet. Though Kratos has kept some of the Valkyrie's core capabilities and limitations a secret, we do know a few basic facts that we can use to infer its capabilities. For starters, we know that a single TR-60T turbofan engine located in the middle of the aircraft gives it enough power to keep up with the fighter jets it's meant to protect. Though the power output is not known, the fact that the Valkyrie can travel up to 2,000 miles in one mission shows that the engine is not only fuel efficient, but that the drone can carry a ton of fuel on board. Speaking of what it can carry, the Valkyrie can also have a variety of weapon loadouts depending on its mission. Looking at the Valkyrie from the bottom, you can see that there's a hard point on each wing and an internal bomb bay in the center of the aircraft. Air Force commanders can equip the Valkyrie with a variety of munitions. For example, if the US military wanted drones to perform escort duties in a highly contested airspace, they would probably put AIM-120 AMRAAM missiles under each wingtip. However, air-to-air -air combat may still be far off for the Valkyrie. But what is certain is that it can carry out an especially dangerous mission usually reserved for the most seasoned pilots. If you were flying above enemy positions, the most likely likely source of incoming fire would not be from the air, but from the ground. Countries like China have impressively dense ground-based air defenses that rely on radar systems to detect, track, and engage aircraft. To take out these missile sites, the Valkyrie can equip AGM-88 HARM missiles, meant to seek and destroy ground radar sites. But that's not all it can do. Inside its internal bomb bay, the Valkyrie can store weapons that allow it to perform close air support missions. The bombs the Valkyrie can carry can range from dumb bombs like the 250-pound small-diameter bomb up to large 500-pound bombs that are equipped with GPS guidance systems. With the capacity to carry up to 1,800 pounds of ordnance spread across its two wingtip hardpoints and its internal bomb bay, however, the wide array of weapons it can bring to bear 
isn't really what makes it special. It's the artificial intelligence on board. When looking at the Valkyrie, it's hard to imagine there's no human in the cockpit. After all, it can make impressive turns, stay in formation, and conduct attacks against air and ground targets. However, there is still a pilot on board. The only pilot resides deep inside the operating system of the robust artificial intelligence that controls the drone. Of course, Kratos has not released anything regarding how they were able to solve this long-standing goal in the drone industry of making an armed drone completely autonomous. But we do know that the Valkyrie has a ton of sensors, radars, and cameras hidden throughout the aircraft that continually pump in data at rates that would make your home Wi-Fi scream in pain. But despite how advanced the AI is, it doesn't make sense to deploy the Valkyrie next to stealth fighters if the drone itself wasn't stealthy. It would be kind of like putting a big old shoot me sign next to the F-35. Because of this, Kratos has incorporated numerous stealth systems like radar absorbent paint, composite body, sleek design, and angled intakes, all of which work to deflect radar radiation and reduce its heat signature. These enhancements basically make the Valkyrie like an F-35 from Wish, except it actually works. And if all of this was not enough to convince you about how revolutionary the XQ-58 is, this next part will blow your mind. Traditional hunter-killer drones like the Predator need long runways in order to take off and land. While the U.S. has been continually upgrading these systems over the years to need shorter and shorter runways, the fact still remains you can't just yeet a Predator off a mountainside and expect it to take flight. But you can with the Valkyrie. If you notice how the Valkyrie takes off, it's very different from any armed drone before. Looking more like a space shuttle than a drone, the Valkyrie takes flight by propelling itself off the rails of its launch pad. But since the drone takes off with a rail system, how does it return to Earth when it completes its mission? After a successful mission, the Valkyrie deploys several parachutes that gently float it back to the ground. Once on the ground, a recovery team can pick it up, fix any damage, and get it back into the fight. Think of it kind of like recovering a space shuttle module to reuse after fixing it back up. But why does the U.S. military need a drone that could shoot weapons? After all, isn't the U.S. military already the most advanced in the world? Despite the fact that the U.S. military remains the most technologically advanced military in the world, it is not the biggest. The Chinese Army has more than half a million more personnel than the U.S. Army while its navy has about 50 more ships, albeit on average being much smaller. Technological and numerical advances are much less when comparing aircraft and submarines. However, there is something to be said in that quantity has a quality of its own, and that is the true advantage China enjoys in the South China Sea. In addition to its numerical advantage, China also feels the world's largest and most diverse ballistic missile inventory, designed to keep American ships and aircraft as far away as possible. Being outnumbered and actually outgunned regarding missiles, the U.S. needs a force multiplier in this fight. If a war were to break out, the Air Force and Marine Corps would certainly perform well, but there would certainly be losses. As mentioned earlier, each F-35 lost is about a $100 million bill to the American taxpayer. However, that loss does not factor in the years of training that the pilot completed before even taking off for that final time. That is where the Valkyrie comes in as a game changer. With a current unit cost of about $3 million and an expected cost of $2 million per unit once production is in full swing, the Valkyrie has an opportunity cost of 50 times less than an F-35. Combine this with the fact that Kratos says that they can make 200 Valkyries in a year, almost the same number of fighter pilots the U.S. military graduates each year across all platforms. So having the Valkyrie fly alongside manned aircraft is a no-brainer. This is because the Valkyrie can perform some of the highest risk missions. Because of the depth and breadth of Chinese air defenses, it makes sense to use drones to take on these systems. Additionally, by allocating ground attack missions to the Valkyrie, the higher-end jet fighters like the F-35 and F-22 can be more focused on taking out Chinese aviation than being worried about getting blasted out of the sky by a barrage of missiles. Another major factor that would help the U.S. is having mobile airfields. In the event of a major war, the Chinese would definitely target all of the U.S. airfields it could in Japan, 
South Korea, and even Guam. By having these mobile platforms that can basically launch squadrons of aircraft from anywhere big enough to hold a shipping container, the U.S. can preserve its combat power by dispersing where it launches aircraft so the Chinese are left spinning their wheels on where the U.S. is deploying these drones. Because of this and the fact that U.S. fighter pilots are and will remain head and shoulders better than their Chinese adversaries, preserving the military's human capital and manned fighter jets will certainly help America win any future conflict with China should it arise. Bye for now.